what was it like the last time you did the show? <laughs> <laughs> well, they tried to kick it off Spotify. <laughs> yeah, it was a very small, noisy group of people, by the way. It yeah. wasn't the, the head people. Right. They, but, they tried to make it seem like there was this big movement to get it kicked off Spotify. But when you examine what you were saying and, you know, many more people are saying what you were saying. This was like, what year was this when you were on? 2020. 2020. Yeah. It had sort of just started boiling. Yeah. You know, and now four years later, there's a lot of people pushing back. That's now. right. And I honestly, I thought you were going to never have me on your show again. Why? <laughs> because, you know, it was very, I mean, they had 10 meetings with the employees demanding that it be removed. I thought Joe's going to be so mad at me. <laughs> no, no, they're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. They're, every time someone wants to stop discussions, they're wrong. Especially when you want to try to stop discussions about a very serious and permanent thing that people are advocating to do to children that is also very profitable. And it's, yeah. a, it's a dark, weird sort of a scenario that we're in here right now that's unprecedented, that no one's ever experienced before. And they're using terms like life-saving, gender-affirming care. Yeah. Instead of castration and, and removing breasts and hormones, and it's it's a very, very strange time. So I'm glad we had that podcast, and I would have a, a hundred more of them. Great. I, I think it's very important to talk about this, and I think there's too many people that are scared to talk about it, and that's why this stuff is getting so much traction. And it's scary. It's scary. It's scary that people aren't willing to – admit that children are very easily influenced. It's that's right. I think that's the scariest thing of all, that people are afraid to just say the truth. Yeah. And that's not a good world because we can fix most problems if we can talk about them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, that's my, my position on anyone trying to stop you from talking about things. Yeah. Well, they're, they're wrong. It's not, it's not the way to do it. It's definitely not the American way. And uh, it's not the way we've ever solved problems in this country. And, uh, it, uh, you know, it's, it's a bad thing when you can't be honest about things. And the reason why they want to try to do it is because they know that there's too many people that agree with it and that these people have been silenced before. So they'd like to bully them into silence. They like to scare them into silence. They like to get them canceled. And, you know, before Elon purchased Twitter, you used to be able to do that much more effectively. You you, know, what? The silencing? Yeah, the yeah, silencing is right. so easy. If that's you right. said, I mean, look. Megan Murphy was kicked off of Twitter for years. That's right. Just for saying a man is never a woman. That's right. And it look, I mean, there's no question, I think, that Elon taking over Twitter broke open the monopoly on a lot of conversations. Yeah. I, I do think that had that effect. And it's really important. I mean, look, if their position, if the gender activist position was a good one, they wouldn't have to shut everyone up. Right. Yeah. They wouldn't have to object. I mean, they took my book off Target. They threw a fit and Target removed the book. And they did it because even though they have hundreds of trans celebratory books, hundreds of celebra books celebrating gender transition for teenagers, even one that was critical of it, that was too much for them because they knew it would break their monopoly on the narrative. Well, the, the really scary thing is when you see these detransitioners get attacked – that's yeah. that's terrifying. That's terrifying because that's just so – it's so cruel. It, the, the, the complete lack of compassion for someone that's done, you know, as the title of your book, irreversible damage to, to their life forever. They'll that's never right. have children again. They'll never have breasts again. The, the fact that this is just a, a part of this bizarre cult that a giant swath of our population is consumed by right now. That's right. And they, did, they didn't let detransitioners be part of the story. Yeah. That there was a growing number of these women who were regretting their transition and they had something and they were brave enough to speak up. And that took real courage because yeah. they're talking about their own experience, their own damage, their own bodies. Yeah. I mean, they were the most courageous of all. And, uh, and they, were, they, they were treated horribly by the activists. Yeah, it's so dark. Like you don't want to think that people can make mistakes. Even if you think that people should be allowed to transition when they're young, you don't think that some people are going to do it and regret it? That's insane. You think that everybody who goes through surgery 
to remove parts of their body because they feel like they're in the wrong gender. You think all those people are going to be happy? That's insanity. Yeah, I mean, it it's, you know, like a religion in the sense of a funda- the fundamentalism of belief against all evidence to the contrary. I mean, these people believed this on faith. It was a creed, and there was no disabusing them of this, even when there was growing evidence of thousands of young women regretting it. Well, finally now the New York Times is on board, though. <laughs> Which is really interesting. It is. I saw, I saw someone commenting on Twitter, and I yeah. think they're probably correct. And they said, this is because the trial lawyers are involved now. And I think they're correct. I think this is why the New York Times has kind of shifted sides, because I think they realize the lawsuits are coming. And once a few of them are successful, and they will be, it's going to get crazy. Well, I, I think that that is a part of it. Um, But I don't think the lawsuits are going to solve it as easily as they did, say, the repressed memory scandal uh, of prior eras and, you know, um, the multiple, you know, personality disorder, you know, all these people who thought they had repressed memory of of various kinds of harm and uh, were imagining, you know, uh, you know, childhood molestation that didn't happen and put, you know, that. Are you talking about like the the satanic stuff from the 80s? Yeah, from the 80s, that whole satanic. I I think that got reversed through lawsuits in part because they weren't following clear medical, you know, clear protocols of their profession. The problem with the the gender, going after the gender regime through the courts, and I'm in favor of it, don't get me wrong, but the problem is that the the gender therapists, the, the, the therapists, the doctors were all following protocol when they yeah. transition a kid um, to, you know, and cut up their bodies in various ways, you know, incapacitated them in various ways. They were actually following affirmative care, which is the official protocol. So I just... Which is crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. crazy. It's so crazy that there's so many things that we don't allow children to do because we know that children can't really make lifelong decisions at the age of 11 and 12 and 13, but yet we'll let them in this case. That's right. It's so nuts. Yeah. I, I you know, when I look back on it, you know, there are a few, I sort of had a few, there were a few sort of lessons of, of it, but one of the things that really stood out was that um, almost in every case, there were medical professionals who should have known better and very often therapists who should have known better encouraging the, a young girl who was a little anxious or had some anxiety, had some depression, encouraging her down this road as the solution. Yeah. But it's also not recognizing what we know about what happens to people when they give them testosterone. So right. testosterone alleviates anxiety. Testosterone creates a, a feeling of euphoria. Right. It does a lot, especially when you give it to someone in doses that their body would never normally have. That's right. That's right. And so what the girls would go on it and they would feel great and they would become evangelists for testosterone. They would tell all their friends, you got to do this. I feel great. All my anxiety is gone. Of course, now they may have a permanent five o'clock shadow. Yeah. Um, Change in their voice. Change in their voice. They detransition. That never goes away. Yeah. Yeah. It's very dark. 